Oh yeah, the Mark 18, 10.3 inch goodness. This little CQB guy is the king. But what are those? Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms and if you thought today's video is all about the Mark 18 and why it's superior to everything else, you'd be correct. Just kidding, for those of you that are new to the channel, you probably don't know, though a majority of you probably do know, this little guy right here is one of my all time favorite rifles and yes, this is a short barreled rifle with a 10.3 inch barrel. The Mark 18 has been around for quite some time now and has been just a very popular firearm and has been making a comeback within the last, I don't know, five years or so of just looking cool and being fun to run. But with that being said, the 10.3 inch barrel, as much as this pains me to say, it's not king. All right, I would say that this guy right here would be perfect for CQB, move, maneuvering in and around a vehicle, things like that, right? And I know I can already hear a few of you guys typing away in the comments section like, do you think he's gonna start melting and breaking down on camera when he's having to bad talk the Mark 18? No, because I'm here to justify it, kind of, but more so, are there better options out there? Well, of course, depends on your needs and everything, but ultimately the answer is yes. All right, and let's go ahead and talk about it really quick. First of all, the 5.56 cartridge, when it was originally designed, was designed to be shot out of a 20 inch barrel utilizing a rifle length gas system. And with the Mark 18, sure, there were needs that arose uh, for the United States Navy, for people, for Marines to be able to board ships and clear boats. And if you've ever been on a boat before, you probably know that you get tight corners and all sorts of stuff like that. They wanted better ballistics. And if you needed to shoot from one side of the boat to the other, better range than like your typical nine millimeter sub guns and things like that, right? So during that time, they so they figured, hey, the M4's been doing pretty well for us. Let's just cut it back even further. And so that's what they did. The only problem is though, like I said before, the 5.56 cartridge was designed to be shot out of a much longer gun. Whenever you take the 20 inch barrel and the rifle length gas system and pretty much just cut it in half, you start running into some issues. The biggest issue is velocity and ultimately the terminal ballistics of the 5.56 cartridge because what makes the 5.56 cartridge so lethal and so effective is velocity. And when you take away barrel length, you take away velocity. Accuracy is still fine. Of course, you're not gonna get, you know, <laughs> accuracy out to 600 yards with this guy because the bullet simply won't travel that far. But if you were to look at something like the Mark 12, which has an 18 inch barrel, sure, you can. If you look at the M16s that you know, a lot of us Marines are still issued that features a 20 inch barrel, we're still getting great accuracy out to 500 yards. And that's not to say that the accuracy is bad on a shorty. It's just, it simply can't reach that. So, all that being said, one big thing when it comes to barrel length for the 5.56 cartridge, and this is something that um, isn't talked about a whole lot, and thankfully some YouTubers out there and some other forums and everything else talk a little bit about dwell time, which is great. So, yes, I saw Grantham's video talking about the Mark 18. May have been a little bit of inspiration here, but just throwing it out there, figured, hey, it's time for us to go ahead and badmouth this guy out a little bit, all right? So with that being said, dwell time. Dwell time is ultimately, when you think about the bullet passing down the barrel and those gases escaping out the barrel, it is the time from which the bullet passes. One of these might have a better looking gas block on it than the other that you guys can actually see. Right here's the gas block on this guy. This is a 12.5 inch barrel on here, all right? When the bullet is traveling down the barrel, it's being propelled out the barrel utilizing gases, right? So as those gases travel through here, you get to the gas block. At that point in time, the bullet is traveling past where the gas block is and starting to get out the muzzle. That is whenever your dwell time comes into play because that's when the gases are then traveling up to the gas block, down through the gas tube, and then actuate the rifle or pistol in this case. Sweet. The moment that it exits the muzzle is ultimately when your dwell time has ceased because now all the gases have found a much larger escape and that is right throughout the muzzle. Remember the path of least resistance, right? So that's when it all travels down that way. Whenever you shorten the dwell time by as short that the Mark 18 is, you do run the risk of 
reliability issues. You don't have enough large of enough window for the gun to actuate. So some manufacturers have found the idea or the best way to compensate for that is to open up the gas port, which is literally the hole drilled on the barrel, open it up a little bit more so that way more gases can flow through. Sweet, great, awesome, works great. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Okay, except there are some things wrong with that, all right? Now, granted, a lot of us that are have our little guys like this and everything, we're not gonna have to really, for the average shooter, you're not gonna really have to worry about some of these issues. But for some of you out there, this might be a big deal, especially if you're sending a lot of rounds down range because ultimately, the more gas you have coming back into the system, the more violence that is, the more, the more the gun has to work harder or this, the harder the gun is working, I should say. And that is going to lead to a wear on parts. It's going to lead to a little bit heavier felt recoil. And that's why I just added a H buffer on mine too, a heavier buffer to kind of slow things down and to compensate for all the extra gas coming through. That being said, is reliability an issue for my Mark 18 here? No, I have never had a reliability issue with this gun. That being said, would I say it is as reliable as something like an 11.5 or, or 11.8 or even a 12.5 and I can feel comfortable in saying, you know what, no, right? And that is just based off of the basic design of what the 5.56 cartridge was made to be shot through. Easy enough. So what is, other than what I've talked about a little bit now, what is really the, is, is one inch really that big of an advantage? <laughs> Insert all the comments you guys want. And ultimately it is. So for something like the 11.8 that you see here on this PWS, which ultimately dwell time plays a little bit different role here because this is not a DI gun, a direct impingement gun like the AR. This is a long stroke piston driven system. And before we go any further, I know uh, a lot of you guys out there say, well, technically the AR utilizes a piston driven system. It's kind of like the bolt carrier group and the bolt itself play a piston role. And I see where you're coming from. It makes sense to a point, but understand this, there's actually not a piston that is operating the gun. There's not a piston, there's not a long stroke piston or a short stroke piston or anything like that up here that's applying pressure onto the bolt carrier group. It is gas traveling through a gas tube that makes connection into the bolt carrier group that ultimately actuates it. So yeah, I see where you're coming from, but no. So that's just at least my thought on it. You guys, again, can go ahead and uh, complain and you know argue all you want down in the comment section below. I'm here for it, all right? So that being said, the velocity you get from an a from a 10.3 to 11.5 is going to make it that much better because again, what makes the 5.56 cartridge that much effective or so effective is velocity. If you don't have the velocity behind it, you're not gonna get that terminal impact. You're not gonna get that all of a sudden it makes impact, it starts to fragment, it starts to tumble, whatever else, right? And that's, that's kind of a big deal, right? That's again, what makes 5.56 so freaking cool. <sighs> like the shirt. Anyway, so stepping it up even maybe from a 11.5 or 11.8 like this to maybe a 12.5, a little bit added velocity, again, a little bit added barrel length will, again, make the 5.56 gun or the 5.56 cartridge a little bit better. <sighs> With that being said though, Personally, I run my Mark 18 with this little guy all the time. In fact, a majority of the time, the Mark 18 that I have right here has a Surefire SOCOM 5.56 RC2 can to it. And if you're uh, utilizing COD logic, anytime you add a suppressor to something, it slows it down, maybe makes it less effective. When that couldn't actually be further from the truth. Look at it this way. You are adding simply an extension to the barrel here. You have, I, what I like to say is a little bit longer flight time through the barrel because you still have gases that are being, that are pushing the 5.56 cartridge out a little bit further. So with that being said, you're actually getting a slight increase in velocity when you do add a can to it. Uh, maybe one day, you know, we'll get a, we'll, we'll uh, meter it and actually do like a, a velocity reading on it and do it suppressed, unsuppressed, a 10.3 versus, you know, an 11.8 versus a 12.5 is the velocity that you gain that much better. But just remember, any type of velocity you can gain out of the 5.56 cartridge when it comes to the shorter barrel is gonna be better than not having it. So personally, and when I think about shorter short barrels, like seven to eight inch to nine inch barrels, I'm like, you are just, you just got all bark and no bite. Granted, 
and I already know you guys down in the comments, well, would you rather get shot with a seven inch AR or a 10 inch AR? And it, well, neither, right? I get it, okay? Absolutely, it sucks. But the point of the 5.56 cartridge is velocity. And the moment you start cutting that down, you start losing it, right? That being said, it's also just absolutely obnoxious to shoot a 5.56 gun with like a seven inch barrel. It's not a good time. Okay, maybe for the people around you. Me, I still have a good time pulling the trigger on just about anything, so whatever. Okay, all this to be said, it really comes down to what your needs are. If you live in a more of a open environment, you know, we were traveling into Nebraska to shoot with flair and out there I'm gonna be like, wow, I need a 300 Win Mag out here. Uh, maybe that proof research I have over there, right? Because it's just open terrain out there for as far as you can see and you know, as much as I love my Mark 18, I felt like if I were to choose something similar to that, hey, a Mark 12 in that situation would be ideal. Uh, we were talking with some people out there. They say have, they have all sorts of pests and issues like that. And they're like, oh yeah, we make sure we have our 308s in the back. Make sure we have our Mark 12s, which was kind of neat. And so it's like, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But if you're more of an urban environment, again, apartment buildings, things like that, maybe something as simple as just your handgun is gonna work out fine for you. So ultimately it comes down to your needs and what you're comfortable with. And of course, what you're comfortable with is a big thing. And of course, training, right? So the 11.8, awesome. If I'm, the reason I'm still so caught up on this guy is because I do run it suppressed all the time. And so I still have what would be considered just about a 16 inch gun here, right? With the muzzle or with the silencer attached. And so when I'm maneuvering it through my vehicle, I'm taking it off my Gray Man Tactical uh, rugged molly panel system on the back of my seat or whatever. It's still easy for me to maneuver this guy around. And if I'm not wearing hearing protection in a crap situation, I don't have to really worry about blowing my eardrums or anything like that with the can on. If I still wanted to utilize like my Colt, which does have a 16 inch barrel on it, and the suppressor, all of a sudden I'm, you know, it, it becomes very unwieldy and not comfortable to shoot in close quarters, right? So take all that for what you will. If you're looking to build something new, you want to look at AR pistols, what's out there. Well, <laughs> compare it like this. What do you already have? If you already have a 10.3, why build another one? Go out there and try something else, right? If you don't have something and you're looking to get right into it and try something whatever, try something new, I would really recommend either 11 to 12, 13 inch range right there just because of the increased reliability factor and the better ballistics from the 5.56 cartridge. That being said, the Mark 18 is still the proven king. All right, I'm just, I mean, <laughs> look at it guys. This right here just screams sexy, and I don't care who you are. You don't need anything more than this right here. Unless, again, you're in Nebraska and you've got some really big game that you gotta handle. That's why we're giving away a Barrett M82, 50 BMG, semi-auto, 10 round with the Trigicon that you see right here. I, for the first time, I dual wielded 50 cals. And if you haven't seen our video announcing this as our giveaway with Flair, go check it out. The intro is pretty spicy because, well, how could you not get excited when you've got a 50 cal in one shoulder and in the other and you just go at it. And yes, I can be the first to admit that at the very end of those mag dumps, I was thrown off balance, but recovered and really, really enjoyed that. And that was the uh, first and so far only time that I've dual wheeled 50 cals. It's not going to be the last time, though, I can tell you that. ClassicFirearms.com is where you get your entries. Go ahead and hit that top banner. It'll show you all the different ways to gain said entries. One of the entry methods is by utilizing a code word, which is very simple, FLAIR, F-L-A-I-R, because that's the gentleman that we worked with. And if that video gets 30,000 likes, <sighs> Braden Price, Andrew Flair, myself, and Kendall Gray we're gonna load up that pink pickup truck. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch our video. We're gonna load up that pink pickup truck. We're gonna get it down here to North Carolina and we're gonna send it to the moon with 500 pounds of Tannerite. Who does not wanna see that? Nobody. If you say you don't wanna see that, you're lying to yourself. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.